Hello, podcast listeners. We know podcasts are a great way to catch up on a program that you may have missed on KSJE, and it's provided as a free service of this radio station. But you know, KSJE is now listener-supported, and so while you enjoy this podcast, we hope that you'll also take some time to join KSJE. You become a member today. It's quite easy to do. Just go to our website at ksje.com slash support and pick the level of support that best matches your budget. Thanks again for listening. Here's your podcast. This program is supported by San Juan Health Partners Urology, providing a wide range of personalized services for the whole family, including children. Our caring professionals are dedicated to helping meet your urology health needs with skill, experience, and service you need. For a complete listing of our services and to learn more, visit SanJuanHealthPartners.com or call 505-609-6300. San Juan Health Partners Urology, a division of San Juan Regional Medical Center. Well, let me turn to my guests who are here with me this morning. Once again, from the Aztec School District, Superintendent Kirk Carpenter is here. Good morning. Good morning, Scott. Thanks for being here. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Also, Deputy Superintendent Tanya Prokop is here. Good morning to you. Good morning, Scott. Thank you all for coming in this morning to talk a bit about uh, what's going on these days in the Aztec School District. And, of course, here we are, mid-April. Uh, the semester or school year is wrapping up it'll be over before we before we know it i guess won't it yeah you know uh you know they say time flies when you're having fun and it, uh, this year's been no exception it's been it's been a great school year still as we we think uh, still a lot of time left for some great learning to occur but uh, for us it's uh, busy with uh, what we're doing is really just uh, planning still for next year uh, obviously a lot of things we're doing uh, to continue to wind up this year um, with, with still budget, we're still trying to get a budget planned for next year. But it, it's been a great school year. Um, I, I know I probably I can speak for Miss Prokop. Uh, every day is a great day. Some greater than others. Uh, every every day brings on new challenges. But uh, it's been another great year. And so we, what we're we're right now really just planning for and trying to to get our minds around for next year because there's still some unanswered questions and still specifically around budget and some of the bills and uh, but it's been another great year and so we're i think uh, blessed we get to do what we do where we get to do it and uh, obviously we've enjoyed it or uh, we just haven't wanted to do it anywhere else because we've been there i'm i'm the baby over there as far as leadership with 29 years of miss pro cop who thought she'd make just a short stay uh, she always tells that story, and I just smile when she tells it. But she's been there over 30 years, so it's been a great place for us. I guess so. And, again, lots of uh, knowledge from the both of you and, and the other leadership team members at Aztec Schools, So because you've been there for well, so long, all of you. We hope so. We hope it's knowledge we're sharing. We, <laughs> you might want to ask some of the is. other people what we're sharing. But, uh, it's been, yeah, we uh, a lot of experience and knowledge, I think, of the leadership team, what we call our district leadership team. There's a lot of cabinet people, too, but as far as the senior leadership, we'll call it, um, as I said, uh, 29 years for me, and then with Miss Engelhart, who's the other uh, district of main leadership, but she she's at 30, and then Miss Prokop over 30 years. So um, I think we probably average 30 years, and uh, so that that gives you a little idea of Miss Prokop's number of years. Now, not age, because Miss right. Prokop I think is probably actually maybe younger than I am, but uh, she's she's been there a long time, and I think that that. That in itself um, speaks highly of of the district um, in what it offers and 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 our love for the district, but also I think there's a lot of value in and what we have done um, in the district, just coming up through through the ranks as teachers, as as principals, as coaches, and all the other things we've done. And um, it, it's a special place. It's been, like I said, it's done a lot for us. And um, I know I see it for myself, and uh, I know Miss Prokop a lot. We we joke we're we're made a lot of the same, and, and uh, I think we we see it as a service we give back to the district. Um, and uh, so, so we've been very fortunate in what we've got to do for the district, and um, it's been fun, and it's been a fun ride, and it's not over. We don't have any immediate plans in the near future. Um, I know Ms. Prokop doesn't because, you know, I get to evaluate her and decide how, what she does each year. And as, as far as I'm concerned, she's going to be there uh, 
as long as I'm there, she's there because she's great. And, and same with Miss Engelhardt. I always say that any of the good things that are happening are a result of some of their great work because they do a great job. But for me, it's a board, and, and uh, but we have a great board. So as long as I stay in good graces, then um, we're in good shape. There you go. Any, anything funny going on, it's because maybe I've tried to run with an idea too quick. <laughs> I always just bounce it by the bank, brain trust. So. There you go. Well, and that's an important thing to do. And surrounding yourself with good people Absolutely. is a sign of Absolutely. good leadership, as we all know. And so, Ms. Brokoff, let me turn to you a little bit about what a glowing uh, evaluation from your boss sitting right next to you. But this time of year, is it hard to keep the students uh, concentrated on, on wrapping up the, the school year? I know some years may be a little bit more difficult when the weather is a bit more spring-like than we've seen it uh, outside this past few weeks. But is it is it hard to keep the students focused as a former principal and uh, HR person? Uh, students and staff, I think. And staff yeah, too, I think, right? I think even the adult, I think Take we all. A little spring fever. Yeah, we, yeah. you know, it, it, you know, you, it, the light is out longer when we get True. home from school or right. from work. And um, so, yeah, everybody kind of has their ideas about uh, going outside and playing, um, but it's also rejuvenating. And the biggest thing that uh, teachers and, and principals uh, do at this time is stick to routine. Uh, we're still f uh, finishing up some testing, some state mandated tests. So finishing those up. So parents make sure kiddos have a great breakfast, get to school uh, nice and, and in a timely fashion and uh, let the students have an opportunity to show what they know. Uh, so yeah, we're just kind of sticking to routine in these well, about a last month and a half or so. All right. Right. That's true. That's true. Well, and I'm glad Mr. Carpenter said that neither one of you are going anywhere because I'm glad we signed you both to lifetime guest contracts here <laughs> Absolutely. at the radio Absolutely. station. So, And I'm not buying any lottery tickets. So. That, well, okay. So uh, <laughs> that, that's good for, for me anyway, knowing I have some great guests coming in for the, for the long-term future. So you mentioned budget, Mr. Carpenter. Let me get back to that because, again, the state passed the budget, and uh, there were a lot of bills. We were talking about that before we came on the air this morning about how many – bills were passed by the legislature and signed by the governor and mm -hmm. so now the job is for folks to kind of go through those and see how they will affect education school districts that was a big focus of the legislative session and so um what are your folks telling you about uh, the budget and about funding for the next school year as you mentioned you're looking already ahead to the school year of 2019-2020 uh, if not beyond well we're excited for staff because it, the, there's some long overdue raises um you know in in with funding, you know, the as I've mentioned before, the funding formula is all the same for everybody as far as the way it's calculated. Uh, but that doesn't mean that salaries are the same in all the districts. And so when the they mandate certain minimums and that type of thing, it allows districts maybe to catch up with neighbors because we're not the same as Farmington. We're not the same as Central. Uh, we're close to Bloomfield. but And that's important because you want to bring in, you hope that what your district offers is what attracts people. Um, but there's been also a conversation many years ago that um, a, a great mentor of mine, Dr. Linda Paul, and I had sitting in an office. And she says, you know, Kirk, we're not going to keep people just because we're nice. You have to attract people because of what you offer them. They have to put food on the table. And our salaries, have we've, we've seen them decline. Um, and a lot of it is because of the combination of federal funding. Um, we do not have a lot of federal dollars. We don't have federal lands. I mean, we have a third of the federal dollars, for example, that our neighbors in Bloomfield have, not to mention what Farmington might offer. And so we—that's unique among it is very local unique. school districts, right? Among San Juan County absolutely. school districts, even Farmington gets more federal dollars, I oh, think, than absolutely, you do. Absolutely, absolutely, and and then even the size factor um, of Farmington. So now Farmington and I do share one unique factor that when you look at per pupil funding. They're in that category, the lowest. We're in the lowest. In fact, we have said it many times. We've been the lowest in the state a couple years running, a few years back. And and but, but us being a smaller, middle-sized district also hinders us. But again, it's fair in the way people are funded, and it's it's just the way it works. But so when the state comes in and does minimums, it helps us. It helps us hopefully catch up with others and attract teachers to try to get us in because they do look at that. But hopefully, what they do look at too are the districts. And fortunately for all of our districts up here, and I've said it many a times, um, we are blessed with great school districts up here. Uh, Farmington, for a, a big size district, probably the highest performing. Um, we are very, I think, good in what we do. Bloomfield, Central, all of us have schools that do very well. We all have schools that can prove Farmington, everybody included, but all of our school districts up here do very well. So those are things that are very beneficial. 
And But again, it's hard to compete sometimes when you look at administrative salaries. I mean, we have people in our district that uh, I always mention, in, I mentioned Ms. Prokop earlier as the deputy superintendent. She, she's also HR, but she also does a lot of our school improvement. We, we do have to wear different hats in a smaller district, but right. the work that Ms. Uh, Prokop and Ms. Englehart do in their positions, you know, I talked to Ms. Englehart yesterday in our site leadership meeting, um, and it goes in a smaller district, you have to do a lot of different things. But, you know, you look at the salaries and compare to what other things are happening in other places, and sometimes it does. It, it's not a day that I don't drive from here to, to uh, Aztec and think. It's just unfortunate that we're not where we need to be sometimes with salaries. But you just can't make the changes because, again, the combination of what you can do with your funding you can't offset some of those costs with federal dollars, so you can't move your operational from the state and move those salaries. So, but when you do get minimums and uh, with teacher salaries, and now they're doing that with principals, it allows you to compete more in those two areas. But it does bring challenges with the other areas like central office positions, your cabinet positions. So those are things that we're, we're trying to tackle. Um, however, it, it, it is a challenge. Um, we're still trying to look at where we're going to be with our budget. Uh, we're still trying to see if we're really going to be fully funded. We're not. I think all the districts are facing that in the state for the most part, unless you're in a Hobbs America where I just saw uh, the great superintendent down there, T.J. Parks, the last Friday. And, uh, you know, they from the but They 40- must have other concerns, right? Don't they have an enrollment explosion probably down huge. there in Hobbs and, and some other issues because well, of the oil field and 450 activity? 450 new kids this year. Right. I mean, since the 40th day. So... And where do you put them? That's exactly. And so there's a whole new thing they're, they're dealing with. But we have to be positive about what do we do. It, 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 we're seeing people getting raises, and that's the most important thing. Insurance increases, yes, but it's not a one-to-one. So when we say there's a 5% insurance increase and you're getting a 6% raise, people say, I'm only seeing a 1% increase. That's, that's not the truth. The, the premium on insurance is not the same as your overall salary. So we're trying to present a clear picture for staff. And so it absolutely is going to be a better picture. And I, like I've told staff when I go to my superintendent chats, let us worry about the revenue issue on the district and how we figure out the shortfall because we're going to have to figure that out and we are Mm -hmm. Um, but you are going to see a raise it's well deserved and hopefully over the next couple few years we should see this and we need to catch up and so that's the positive and we need to live off that Um, you know in every situation there's going to be a negative in there Um, what you have opportunity to do is how you look at it and the positive of all this is we're going to see some increases for staff there's going to be erb increases in some respects maybe a little bit for them but that's their money they get in the future there's going to be some impact to that's the retirement district. retirement yes money, thank right? you hey good job right i'm trying well, to think of some of the acronyms, acronyms that we're using that's well, right that's you're right you're going to be educated we're going to be able to move you over to education <laughs> for too long <laughs> you don't want that um <laughs> But, thank but you. I think that the biggest challenge is really just getting through this. As much as, as people would say there's more money going to education than before, they should be in good shape. What we're really finding is that there are shortfalls. And Still? Absolutely. Okay. And, but I want to be very clear. We're very thankful. Sure. Um, and that w- you cannot fully fund everything at the level they're going to. There's going to be shortfalls. Um, but we are very thankful, and we're just going to have to roll up our sleeves. We're still going to have to tighten our belts on some things. Um, there's going to be challenges. There's always going to be. Um, to me, I've always said this, challenges are nothing more than opportunities, and I think uh, there are opportunities to really look at how we're doing our business, um, and if we just roll it up and we, we – just have to address some things and right. sometimes that does mean cutting we've seen a decline in enrollment that's part of our challenge in, in aztec and with those those kinds of uh, challenges and opportunities then we have to cut some staff uh, appropriately uh, that's our due diligence to our taxpayers when sure. we have less students you need less staff and that makes you look critically at what you're doing we've had to do that for many many years I won't tell you that's not, that's not getting old. I won't tell you that 
we'd like to have more staff in certain areas like some others to say how do we address instruction and do that differently today because we can't keep doing it the same way. But you know what, Scott, that, that's what we're dealt with. And uh, Ms. Prokop and I, uh, she gets to see the behind the doors of where the old coach in me comes out, some of it more pleasant to see than others, but that's just what it is. And that's a competitive side of me. And if that goes away, then that's when I need to get out. Right. And real quick, when you say cutting, I know in the past you've been able to absorb some of these reductions in staff through attrition or retirements or things like that. Is that still the plan? That's still the plan. And um, that will always be the plan. And I hope that we'll always, we'll always be able to do that. Right. Um, but there may come a day when we won't be able to. Sure. Ms. Prokop, let me turn to you a little bit about uh, your HR hat. And uh, when we talk about raises for staff, well-deserved, I mean, does that help with recruitment? Does that help with retention when you're able to offer your folks a bit more money than uh, you have been in the in the past? Absolutely. Um, yes to D, all the above. Okay. It helps all in right. all those different categories. You know, I tease sometimes with folks that, that Aztec Schools is a vortex and it'll it'll suck you back. We have a lot of staff that'll come back to us after they've left, and I tease about this vortex. Uh, ironically, I had a couple conversations with folks um, over the weekend and at the end of last week, and, and both of them are folks that have left our district uh, for a variety of reasons. Uh, one to be a stay-at-home mom, uh, one uh, to, to find a better salary. But now with the salary increases, uh, they were asking me about uh, vacancies and wanting to come back. And so that's always kind of exciting. You know? right. as, as Kirk talked about right. the, the different funding arenas, you know, we always talk about there's different buckets uh, that can be spent certain ways. So um, some buckets are, are, are starting to fill up a little bit better, but we can only use them to purchase different items or be spent on different things. So sometimes when there isn't enough money, it's because a certain bucket hasn't, hasn't been filled up enough. Sure. And other districts, as, as Kirk talked about, have, have different funding opportunities. So their buckets get um, filled up a little bit um, quicker um, or have a higher, maybe it's a bigger bucket because of just uh, the district boundaries and uh, where it lays and so what it qualifies for. Um, but Aztec is a, is a great, unique place. And um, I, I understand that people have to leave sometimes because we all have bills to pay. Um, but I think that we create a really great um, work environment as well. You know, uh, one of the blessings of being small is that um, it's kind of like Cheers, right? The, the television show Cheers once upon a time. It's a place where we know your name. I mean, we're going to know everybody that works for us. And, and because, we've, because of our longevity in the district, um, we're going to know your story as well. And so we're not only going to say hi to you, we're going to ask you how are the kids, how are the ground kids, you know, uh, just personal things. Sure. Um, and so it's for people that desire that and, and can live within their means or, or our salaries can, can work for you. I mean, I'd love for people to invest in our, in our community. Right. Very good. Let me ask a little bit more about another topic, Mr. Carpenter, and that is graduation rates. We saw, I think, statewide some uh, pretty impressive uh, numbers. And I think San Juan County was very well represented as, as well. Were you pleased with the numbers from Aztec uh, schools? Yeah, I think we're pleased. You know, we're seeing an increase. I think the biggest thing is um, you're always pleased. I don't know that you'll ever be totally happy just because if it was 100%, um, maybe then you, you're happy, but then you put back on your game face and say, okay, let's get back to work because if you lose one kid, that's too many. Uh, and so people probably wonder how you can live in that kind of world, but you do. Um, so definitely, definitely pleased. I think as a district, we probably were up uh, as far as in the county. Somebody may have said, uh, "You guys were the highest in in the in the county," and that may be true. I'll tell you the truth, Scott. Even when I was a coach, if somebody asked me how many games you won, how many you lost, I can't tell you. Um, stats are important. What's more important are the kids. Um, uh, what happened each play and I, I always told kids and I know when I say every game's a, uh, every day's a game day I say that and staff price says oh there he goes again but I believe in that and I believe um, that absolutely graduation rate is very important but a lot of that every year seems to change and so it's that every kid you know we have a lot of kids that come in for their GED and I cringe but I also sign those a lot and I sign them because it is a hardship that they're supposed to have but I also know that some kids aren't going to make it unless we do sign those. So 
very pleased with where we're going with the graduation rate. And um, you just hate, you hate to lose any kids. And so it's, a, it's, a, that, it's that double-edged sword. So to try to answer your question, we're happy. We always want to move that up because that's the, our job is we're in the kid business and you always want to try to figure a way not to lose any kids. So we're, we're absolutely happy and we, we want to strive to get to that 100%. And so this year, that's our mark. And next year, what I would just like to see is can we somehow keep the measurement the same and know it's the same? And so I hope that we can do that as we move forward and uh, and absolutely let's continue. And then also let's let's learn from what other peoples are doing around other other peoples. That's great language from an educator. Other people are doing around this. Farmington High School had a great improvement. So have they done something that's working? Right. And I think, too, in the sign of the times of where we're at, if we look at the economy with the migration of students in and out, to see improvement, I think that also is something we need to celebrate. So I don't want to downplay it either. I want to say we need to celebrate the success of any movement up, especially in this area with the economy we've seen. So absolutely we're happy, and I think it, that we do need to celebrate that. Sure. K-12, because kids graduate when they enter pre-K. They celebrate it when they walk across the stage as a senior because that's where it happens. It doesn't happen their senior year or even in high school. It happens when they start that first day of pre-K now because that's where we have it. We started pre-K this past year. Right, right. And the, But the numbers are going in the right direction Absolutely. for you, right? Yes, I mean, that's the idea. Yes, sir. You're getting close to that 100, mm -hmm. um, which is what everybody, I think, wants. Um, the other thing that I think I had heard, and I think I'm remembering this correctly, is that when you sign those GEDs, they are not – counted as, as towards that graduation rate, right? They actually count against you, that's, don't they? That's correct. And, and so that's a little bit misleading, I think, because mm -hmm. these students are, are getting their GED and they're, they're, they're seen as high school graduates. And, and they're seen as dropouts. Right. And and, also. Yes. Yeah. And so, the, the, which is frustrating. And it, it's a philosophical battle. Right. Um, right. Because they have to have a hardship to drop out. But I will tell you, and, and I do... I do follow the guidelines. However, I will tell you that in, there is some leniency from me in some respects because for a lot of these kids, if you don't sign that form, where are they going? And we have an alternative school that has a cap. If, the, if we had the ability for a lot of these kids to open and have m uh, more of an opportunity for them to go there, it would be easier. But I'm also not going to, in many respects, give a student a death sentence on their education and create a nuisance on our community and society because a student can't find a way to make it. And maybe it's us that's failing that student. I will do everything I can to get that student back into school, to find a way for our school to meet the student's need. However, if a GED will allow a student to move forward and become a success uh, for themselves and our society. I'm not going to be the almighty. There's only one of those. Uh, and I'm not going to be that person to hold a student back. And if that's going to hurt our numbers, that's why I say that in many respects, our graduation rate may show different because personally as a superintendent, I'm making a different decision on some of those GEDs and if that's the case, I can look in the mirror and live with that, knowing that there are students maybe moving forward that are hurting our statistics, but that maybe we are making decisions as a district to help students move forward in their life and livelihoods to become more successful because for whatever reason, something's not working in our school system and we can't do that with an alternative school and a high school. And I can live with that, right, wrong, or indifferent. Sure. Interesting perspective. I don't know if I thought about it from your perspective before about what you're faced with when you come when you're when you're facing these students' requests for that GED permission, I suppose. So, let me ask you a bit more back on the budget topic, Mr. Carpenter and, and Ms. Prokop, a little bit about um, some of your other plans, these um, some professional development and and things like that for your staff. We were talking about um, staff and with more more money and raises and, and things like that. And so, professional development is always something I know that you. Uh, 
you think about and and want to offer to your to your teachers as as techniques change and and it's it seems to be ever evolving the public education uh, field. So, um, what's the state budget say about about that? I mean, they don't specifically budget that. I mean, that's obviously they give you the budget and let you move that. I, right. I, I think that in many respects, and for our district, we will not. We do not want professional training to be something that we cut. Not in today's time. Mm -hmm. So we want to try to preserve it as much as we can. Um, however, with that being said, with the way educators are trained, uh, with the practice of professional learning communities, not only in our district, but surrounding districts. I believe those are called PLCs. Yes, Mr. Sir. Carpenter. They are? Yes. I, I'm, I'm telling you, Scott, you, you are, you're moving closer and closer to us. I've been trained very well by my guests. That's what it is. Um, but with professional learning communities that, that are practiced throughout um, the whole county, you don't have to travel. You don't have to bring in. I think it's that uh, whole idea of using the people you have within. So uh, you don't have to bring in the the speakers that, that literally cost forty five hundred to sixty five hundred a day. So we can't cut professional development. I think that's something. W the last cuts we'll make in our budget will be at the classroom. However, sometimes that has to take place again because of numbers. Uh, and the other last place you want to try to think about cutting is your professional development. You, you can't improve student achievement if you don't improve your teachers. And you can't improve your teachers if you don't improve your principals. And, but that doesn't mean that you have to send them off to places. There are programs within the state like the Principals Pursuing Excellence that we have participated in in all the districts up here have, the Teachers right. Pursuing Excellence. Those are quality programs and so those are things we've taken advantage of on purpose. But there are other programs that we can do that, and trainings we can do that we can have our staff take care of, that we can partner with other districts. And so I think, again, what I've said earlier, where challenges that, and monetarily bring up opportunities to plan collaboratively with yourself in your district or with your neighbors to say, how do we bring training from our experts? And our experts exist within our schools. And so it's about thinking differently. Um, not necessarily having a pity party because you can't bring in what people think are the national experts. Not saying that they aren't out there, but they also exist within our schools in our county. Gotcha. My guest this morning from the Aztec School District, Superintendent Kirk Carpenter is here. Also Deputy School Superintendent Tanya Prokop. And uh, what about extending the school year? That was something also mm -hmm. I think the legislature uh, passed, the governor was in favor of and, and signed. Is that something that we'll be seeing? Uh, th there's two two parts of that, extending the school year by 10 days and then uh, also the kind of what was also considered was this, what they call um, K-5+. plus. Aztec schools will not be participating in, in extending the school year, which was a 10-day program. We will be uh, participating in uh, the K-5+, plus, only at the 4-5 level. And the, that K-5+, plus has been going on for probably four or five years. Okay. Um, the extending 10 days, we will not be that, – that was just too hard to get um, mobilized. Um, this year? This year. So maybe next year? Looking at it? Possibly. I, okay. the, 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 there needs to be a lot more flexibility around that program. And, again, it was just too hard to mobilize. And then the benefits of that versus the K-5+. plus. The K-5+, plus is a 25-day program uh, for kids. Uh, we're going to run ours from in from June into July. We're going to do uh, probably about 80 kids that will move from third to fourth, fourth to fifth. The idea is to try to have the same teacher that they will have when they go into fourth grade this next year in fifth grade. Mm -hmm. And there's benefits. They've shown benefits to that. And this will be the first year that we've done that. Again, there's a lot of districts that have participated in that across the state for many years. And there are benefits. Um, it, It'll be unique, the 10 days you, you've seen the Albuquerque Public Schools, what they're going through with parents and how popular that is. The ideas behind it, there may be a lot of merit. I think it just came upon people with the longer session too quick. It's too hard with vacations, with a lot of other things, with teachers and, not, and parents. So I, I just think this year it just was too quick, and we did not want to mobilize around the 10 days. Um, I'll, I'll tell you personally, Scott, what I would love to see happen. I'm not sure that it's it's more school days for students. Now, saying that, we do like the, the K-5+. plus. Mm -hmm. What I would love to see entertained in the future, and this is Kirk Carpenter speaking, so people can take that for what it's worth. 
is in countries. Thirty are, years of education experience. You said that to us. Well, and probably a lot of that stolen because, um, <laughs> I but I admit that. it. Right. Um, where countries are really benefiting, the countries that really perform well, is not necessarily longer time for students in school. It's more time for teachers to plan. So I wouldn't mind seeing a combination of maybe a few more days for students to be in school and more professional development days for staff. So I would love to see the extended school year, in my mind, be, say, three or four more school days and four or five more professional development days. Now, that's even with us having early release Mondays. Right. We have 185 days for staff. I would love to see five more professional development days in our calendar and maybe a few more school days. So that would take up 10 days funded. Right. And I, I stress funded, but I would love to see that. So, yeah, maybe a little bit longer school year. But that in that fashion and give districts the flexibility because Farmington has, I think, 187 professional development days and they have some early release days. So some districts may not need the full um, five more days. Some districts may need eight more professional development days. I would love to see that kind of a plan because you can really do some targeted professional development on what your district needs and then add some student days. You may want some more student days. Um, but give student, that to me is a flexibility I like to see funded versus something that's really prescriptive on just instructional days, 10 more. Give districts a combination of what they really might need. Sure. And let me ask you both a little bit about that professional development idea. And when you're talking to, to parents, I mean, maybe parents, when they were in school, don't remember their teachers having professional development. It seems like a relatively more modern um, thing that we're talking about, that teachers are getting more instruction or more, more assistance or just a refresher or, or something to keep them engaged. Uh, Tanya Prokop, is that something that uh, is a more modern thing than what I'm remembering when I was a kid in school? I don't remember my teachers having professional development, but maybe they did, and I didn't know because I was a, a kid going to school and trying to get in, get out. I, I think that the times are different, and so, and our students are different. And I, I think about what Stephen Covey said about begin with the end in mind. And so if you take a look at the school year and we have X amount of days with students, we really want to start instruction on day one. And instruction doesn't end until the very last day of, of school. And so, you know, again, I, I'd like to thank the community of Aztec for sustaining, um, helping us sustain early release Mondays because we know that it puts, a, puts some families in a bind with kiddos um, coming home early so that staff can work together, um, that staff can attend trainings that are held um, at the district uh, in order to improve instruction. And so when we talk about more uh, professional development days, we're looking, you know, even at the beginning of the school year before students even come, so that day one of instruction is really just on the mark with different curriculums coming into place, with s new staff coming that need to be taught what the new curriculum is and, and how to push it out effectively, uh, for the teachers to be able to plan together and look at student achievement data uh, and, and really fine tune that instruction. Those extra days in the beginning of the year uh, would really benefit. You know, the beginning of the year for, a, for, a, for anybody working in the school district, it's really jam packed. Um, you really hit the ground running. Uh, new staff new to the district have different induction um, processes that, that are going on. One thing that you'll see a lot in the teaching profession is folks coming in before their, their contract actually begins so they can get their classroom set up so they can start with instruction. So it would really be nice if we could have those days where we can pay them for that type of work that's going to be done at the beginning of the year. Makes a big difference. I think from so. From what you're saying. Well, and from what we're seeing with student achievement, right? I mean, Absolutely. It, doesn't that appear it, to be how it works? And, it, and it's really, again, and I, you know, I don't mean to be repetitive, but that day one of, of school, we're, we're starting with instruction and we're fine tuning it. And we're starting with building our relationships with our kiddos, that that's going to go throughout the whole school year. Very good. We've come to the end of our program this morning. Thank you both very much for being here. Happy Thank spring. You. Happy spring. Happy Easter. Same to you, happy. Thank you very much, both of you. My guests from the Aztec School District this morning, Superintendent Kirk Carpenter and Deputy Superintendent Tanya Prokop with me here on KSJE. Did you enjoy that podcast? We hope that you did. And if you did, share it with your friends. And if you really want to keep podcasts like this coming, please support KSJE. You can do it easily online at ksje.com.